even me, uh, I'm so so glad even more than all of even more than the OPs and all the uh, uh, OPs. We thank God for that. Praise God. To all of our dear guests here. To the political leaders. Thank God for all of our dear guests here. To those who really matter, our parents. Abo, and our students who are here. Let me include greetings to all of our future students that I see running around. All the future students. Yes, I see all these little ones. Thank you for coming. So today I've been given the opportunity to tell a little of the story of Lingira Living Hope. Second I get to tell this story from my perspective. For me it started back in 1998. At a time when I was asking God, God, what is your plan for my life? And the Lord gave me the verse from Isaiah 61. And I thought to myself, you know, this is a very hard thing to do. And I thought to myself, you know, this is a very hard thing to do. And I thought to myself, you know, this is a very hard thing to do. And that those very ones would be the ones to raise up the ancient ruins. They would restore the wasted generations. And build up the devastated ruins. And I thank God that that is what we are seeing today. I first came to these beautiful islands in 2002. As far as Westerners, I think the only ones here who preceded me are George and Geraldine Smith. I came with Youth with a Mission. And as I came uh, together with Papa O and Mama O on the boat, God spoke to me. And he said, look around you, this is your home. And I thank God for that. As I came back to the United States, I also want to quickly bring greetings from Olive and Okoro. They said to please tell you they are crying big crocodile tears that they could not be here today. But the daughter of Papa O's brother is wedding today. And she is wedding today. So that's why none of them could be here. But they love you so much. So as I came to the islands here, I worked with the youth of the mission, the clinic, as a nurse. And I began to see all the needs of the people who were coming to the islands. All the needs of the people who were coming to the islands. It's true we could treat the diarrhea. We could treat the machete wounds. And we could treat the machete wounds. And we could treat the machete wounds. But were we really reaching the cause? What could be done to get to the heart of the problem? So through this frustration, several ideas were birthed. Water and sanitation project. Discipleship project. But there was one thing that still remained. The youth of the islands. So, in one month's time, in 2005, three of our boys from Lingira camp died. These were boys in their 20s. 
Bali ba fubu kama miaka cha mwe cha bili. The boys should not have died. Bali tewe take kwa kufa. Each of them died because of their wrong choices and their bad behavior. Every omu ya swa oru kusala wako kubini mpisa za mwe bili. As we began speaking with other students, we asked them why? Why do you choose these behaviors? But what are you going to get out of our visa? And you have to use the right to sell our work. We have no. They were going to buy a farm, but they truly didn't show me. We have no hope. They truly didn't show me. And they were true. They never lived a truth. They knew they couldn't get a job on mainland. But they managed to make a fortune on the Mary Kurukalu. When we began looking, we saw that most students didn't complete P3. But what to do? But what to know? They are not saying that they are passing over when you come to the back. You can achieve a good start. That year, the Lingira Primary School had over a hundred students in P1. Omo ako bo Lingira Primary School ba isa ba suka mo chik.